Hi, today's topic is going to be dealing with osmosis. There we have. Osmosis is the diffusion of water across a semi-permeable membrane. Um, in a real phospholipid bilayer, there are pores called aquaporins. Water, even though it is small, it cannot diffuse directly across a cell membrane because it has polarity. So instead, there needs to be proteins embedded, integral proteins that need to be embedded across the membrane so that these things can get across. And specifically, if it's for water, um, it's called an aquaporin. The term diffusion, as you can see here, is going to signify and be very important. Osmosis is one that travels from high to low concentration. That's what diffusion represents. It also means that osmosis doesn't require energy. So I kind of shorten this definition down just because I use one word here, diffusion. So you have to understand what diffusion is before you understand this full definition. There are some terms that we also have to recognize, and I'll describe and define them first. We have this term hypertonic. Hypertonic um, is describing an environment when compared to another environment, you need a comparison that has more solute concentration. Another way to say hypertonic, you can kind of take a perspective of solute or you can take the perspective of water. It's an environment when compared to another environment, I'm going to write that again, that has less water concentration. So there's two ways to look at this. In the end, I think you'll be more inclined to look at water concentration, but the prefix hyper means above. Think of hyperactivity. That's why hyper and more correspond together. When you link it to water concentration, unfortunately, the prefix is somewhat null and void. So I look at less water, the E in less, with E in hyper. Okay, that's just a way to do it. I'll define these and then explain in a quantifiable way what hypertonic means, but you need the definition first. The next term is hypotonic. And hypotonic is an environment, again, when compared to another environment, this has, um, that has less solute concentration. Or in other words, if my perspective is going to be about water, it's an environment that has more water concentration. So I correspond it with more, think the O in more, the O in, in hypo. But if you're looking at it in terms of solute, which is how it is technically named, hypo means below, think of like hypothermia, below the normal temperature, hypo and less kind of correspond. The final and third, or the third word, final word, is isotonic. An isotonic is an environment, sorry for my spelling, that has an equal solute concentration. These words are relative. So for example, if you're describing someone as tall, you can't stand alone and be this one person I see is tall. You need a comparison. It's relative. So just like you can't look at an environment and say this environment is hypertonic, you need the comparison to the other side of the membrane. That's generally how we look at it here. What's on the other side of the membrane? You can't look on one side and say, oh, it's hypertonic. Oh, it's hypotonic. Or, oh, it's isotonic. I need that comparison. That's important to to recognize immediately. So what we'll do is we're going to show these terms. Um, I'm actually going to draw these a little bit with my hand, and I'm going to have to walk away from the, the, the microphone here. It gets a little bit echoey, but I apologize for that, but this was the only way I kind of can do this. Okay, so when I draw an environment, I'm going to draw it as a cell. So it's going to be a very simple cell. This is my membrane. My membrane is going to be semi-permeable. Only water molecules will be able to get through this. The solute particles would be too large. It's assumed to happen. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a quantifiable value. If I said 70% solute is on the inside of the cell. By default, the only other stuff that's inside the cell would be, a, would be water. So I can assume then that 30% of this cell would then be water. On the outside, I'm making arbitrary value 
50% solute. You would then have to assume that there's 50% water. So now we decide what do these environments have? I have 70%, 30%, 50, and 50. Solute has to be compared to solute, or water has to be compared to water. The analogy I kind of say, you have to compare apples to apples, oranges to oranges. You can't compare apples to oranges in this scenario. It's up to you which one you want. I always say I focus on water, so that's what we're going to start with. I am comparing 50% water to 30% water. I now have to say, what perspective? I'm going to be inside the cell. That's my perspective. This side of the membrane, inside the membrane. 30% compared to 50%, there is a lower amount of water inside. Less water means it's hypertonic. So I can say that the inside of the cell is hypertonic. If I look at it in perspective of solute, I get the same answer. So it doesn't matter which one you focus on. If there's 70% solute compared to 50% solute, there is more solute on the inside. That's what hyper means. Hypertonic means more solute. So compare solutes, that makes true. Or you can define it as less water. So in both scenarios, it fits that definition. So the inside is hypertonic. Now I'm going to change my perspective to the outside of the cell. So outside the cell is 50% water, as we just did before, 50% water compared to 30%. But to the 50, there is more water outside. More water fits the definition of hypotonic. So whenever you have a side that is hypotonic, you have to have a side that's hypertonic. Just like if I'm comparing only two people, tall and short. You both can't be tall when compared to each other. One has to be tall, one has to be short. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. So when you have an environment that is hypotonic, one has to be hypertonic. It just so happens that I drew it hypotonic outside, hypertonic inside. Let's do another example. Let's see if we're understanding this. Okay. So let's do, um, forty five percent solute. Let's make the outside eighty percent solute. That's even enough information to answer my question. But in the beginning, you might want to look at all right, well, this must then mean fifty five percent water. This must mean 20% water. So let's look inside the cell. I'm comparing 55% 50 water to 20% water. 55 is more than 20, so therefore inside the cell, hypotonic, more water. If I compare solute, 45% to 80%. 45% means there is less solute. That's what hypotonic means. There is less solute. So the same answer for both scenarios. You don't have to do both. You get the same answer. But again, it's up to you how you want to do this. The outside, if I'm, that's my perspective, 20% water compared to 55% water, there is less water out here. So therefore, it's hypertonic. So that's identifying which side is hypertonic, which side is hypotonic. That's great. But now we have to decide the movement of water. Since osmosis is diffusion of water, diffusion happens from a high to low concentration. This is my high concentration, 55. This is my low concentration. So the movement is going to be outside the cell. So if we went back here, now we look at where would the, the water travel? 50% outside, 30% inside, so therefore, it's going to go from high to low, water will travel in. You'll get this, hopefully you can make this connection, water always travels to where the, the hypertonic environment is. So hypertonic is in the cell, that's where water is going to travel. Hypertonic is outside the cell, water is going to travel towards it. Because by definition, hypertonic means less water. Osmosis is high to low. One trickier example that you've got to realize, and, and I can get students to think this um, very quickly. If I put inside the cell 50% water, 50% solutes, 
A lot of students go right towards the fact that this is isotonic because they say 50-50. But this is comparing apples to oranges. There is not enough information drawn here to identify because you don't have a comparison. There is nothing out here to compare it to. So I don't have a way to answer this question yet. Just because the inside is 50-50 does not mean it has to be isotonic. So if I did 75% water out here, now I can compare 75 to 50. 75% 75 is where there's more water, so outside is hypotonic. 50 is where there's less. This is hypertonic, so therefore water will travel in. To show you a scenario that's isotonic, literally it just has to be, six. for example, say I said 60% water, outside has to be 60% water. Isotonic does not mean that everything's 50-50. Because these two values are the same, you automatically, by default, have to have 40% solute, 40% solute. So therefore, water basically travels in both directions. It just doesn't stop. It'll be somewhat uh, equal across the membrane. So this would be isotonic, isotonic. In my analogy, the only way that someone's not tall and short is if they are the same size. So that would be like kind of this example. They're both isotonic. 